in this little clip I will demonstrate why the uh, matrix form and the observation wise form of a regression model are absolutely equivalent. We have all this stuff in the lecture notes, all the written detail, but I want to talk you through um, but given it's on a, on this tape you can do it at your own uh, at your own pace. So let me first write down the uh, matrix form of a model. Okay, so of a regression model, the matrix form and that is y equals x beta plus a narrow term. Of course we know what all these um, what all these are, these are vectors and matrices. So really what we have here is y1, y2, all the way to yn equals, and then we have a matrix here. Let's assume we have once a constant in the first column, and then we have one explanatory variable x, and call it x1, x2, all the way to xn. If you had more than one explanatory variable, variables, I would need a second index here. And then we have a coefficient vector. We shall uh, call that beta naught and beta 1. And then plus the vector of error terms, and that is u1, u2, all the way to un. Okay, so just to see that everything confer, conforms size wise, that is n by 1, that is n by 2, this is a uh, 2 by 1 vector, so this multiplication here will be n by 1, and uh, this is n by 1, so this basically we are having an addition of two n by one vectors and that will give an n by one vector so that is all fine of course you know from semester one that the OLS estimate beta hat the OLS estimate beta hat is x prime x inverse x prime y okay this formula you will have to know in your sleep so that was the matrix form. Now let's state the whole problem in observation wise form. Matrix form now. Observation wise form. So how you would have written down this model possibly like this, yi equals beta naught plus beta 1 xi plus ui. Okay, And you do know that in this observation wise form the OLS estimate for we have two different formulas so we have uh, one formula for beta naught hat and we have another one for beta 1 hat. Now uh, we always start with the beta 1, that is the covariance of yi with xi divided by the variance of xi. For instance, in Woolridge, you will find this formula in equation. 219. Let me just note that here. W for Woodridge 219. Well, actually, if you go to Woodridge, what you find in 219, that is uh, the fourth edition. Fourth edition. Actually, what you find there is the following formula. You find the sum of yi minus y bar times xi minus x bar divided by the sum of xi minus x bar squared. Now how can we see that this is exactly the same? What we do is uh, in front we 
multiply by 1 over n in the numerator and we multiply by 1 over n in the denominator. So we change nothing, but now the top, uh, the numerator is obviously equal to the covariance and the uh, denominator equal to the uh, variance of x. So once we have that result, we know that beta naught hat is just for completion is y bar minus beta 1 hat times x bar. So what we now want to uh, want to do is the following. I need to just briefly go back here. This formula in the lecture notes we also called formula 15 and this formula was called formula 17. So you, you can see beta, of course, beta hat here consists of two elements because beta consists of two elements, that's beta naught hat and beta one hat. Okay, so basically what we now want to show is that this estimate here, so the second element from equation 14, is exactly the same to this guy. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether we do the algebra in matrix form or in observation bias form. And by showing this, you will hopefully become a little bit more comfortable with the, uh, with the uh, matrix form. So we will go back, we'll basically, what we'll do is we will uh, start from equation 15 and we will show that it equals or the second element for it equals what we have in equation 17 okay so that's what we do now let's look at 15 there's so several elements uh, here let's underline the first bit here the green bit so we'll start with the green bit and here we start with x prime x let's just think what this is we uh, define the x up here so we'll just perhaps copy that here again um, x was a vector of ones and x1, x2 and so forth all the way to xn so that's x and that is pre-multiplied with x prime so that will just be the transpose of this and there we will have the first row with ones and then we have x1, x2 and so forth all the way to xn here. So the result of this is going to be, so this is a 2 by n, 2 by n times n by 2. The result is of course going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. So let's think about what are these four elements in the first the element, first row, first column. You have 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 and so forth and how many of these little products will we have? We will have n. Okay, n times we add 1 times 1 and the result of that is of course going to be n. So then let's think of the uh, element in the first row and second column. We have 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 1 times x3 and so forth. We're basically adding up all the x's. So what we have here is the sum of all the xi. In the uh, second row, first column, what do we have? We have x1 times 1 plus x2 times 1. Well, basically, we have exactly the same. Again, we are adding up all the elements in x. And now the 2, 2 element it's going to be x1 times x1, so that's x1 squared, plus x2 times x2, that's x2 squared, and so forth, all the way to xn times xn, that's xn squared. So we are adding all these together. So what we get here is the sum of all the xi squareds. 
Okay, so this is basically x prime x. So now, if we go back to our formula, what we really need is x prime x inverse. So now we need to calculate, um, I'll leave a little bit of space, x prime x inverse. Now, we know to calculate the inverse, let's have a little uh, side note here. Okay. A little note. You know, there's a very simple uh, formula to calculate a 2 by 2 inverse. Okay, if you want a inverse, so we have four elements A, B, C, D. That is 1 over the determinant of A. That is also sometimes written like this. Times and now the values on the diagonal are interchanged, so we have d and a, and the elements on the uh, off-diagonal, they remain the same, but they are given negative signs. Okay, so this is what we need to calculate an inverse, a 2 by 2 inverse. So what we first need is basically this bit here we already have, we just have to change two values around and put negative signs here. So these are our uh, the equivalent here is the A, B, C and D. Okay, and then we can use this formula. So what we need, however, is the determinant. Now, the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, so the determinant of X prime A, X. Okay, that's a vertical line. This is quite simple. Again, the formula for the determinant of a um, two by two matrix is the product of the diagonal elements. So that is n times the sum of x i squared minus the product of the op of diagonal elements minus the sum of x i times the sum of x i. So that's sum of x i squared. Be careful that is not the same as uh, the uh, uh, sum of xi squared. Now this is just to have to do this. This is uh, a times d minus uh, b times c. Okay, you may perhaps remember that formula to calculate determinants. So now the um, Actually, before we continue with the inverse, I will rewrite this form in a, in a way that will be useful later. Okay, so that may not necessarily make sense now why we do these transformations, but uh, you just believe me that this will be helpful at a later stage. So, the first thing we're gonna do is the following. You see all sorts of sums here. Now very often sums as we already showed uh, before, if you have sums and we put uh, 1 over 1 over n in front as we've done here and and here, we get sort of nice sort of interpre interpretable uh, terms. So what we really want here is a, we want in the first part, I want to see a one over n times x i squared. And what I want to see here is the sum of x i, but I want to see a one over n in front of here. So now, of course, I can't just write that. I need to, to honor the equality. So you see here, 1 over n, what do I need to multiply that with to get n? We need to multiply that with n squared. So this here is the same as this. What do I have to do over here? Now, remember, we have this term squared, so we have to put a around here. Now what I really have is 1 over n squared 
to make that the same up above here I don't have any n so I have to multiply here with uh, n squared so now this term here which is really a nothing or n to the zero is the same as n squared times 1 over n and then we have to attach that squared 1 over n squared so once we have that you can see there's it's easily we can factor out an n squared and we get 1 over n x i squared minus 1 over n sum of x i and that whole thing squared and we have the n squared out here and now perhaps you will remember that this term here is just an alternative way of expressing the variance of x okay that is the same as the variance of xi okay usually we calculate as we did uh, earlier 1 over n times the sum of xi minus x bar squared but you can actually see that I uh, actually I sort of jumped a step here this bit here 1 over n sum of xi is of course nothing else but just x bar so we have 1 over n sum of xi squared minus x bar squared that is the same as the variance of x it's an alternative formula for the variance um, if you don't remember go back to your stats notes and you will find that so now we can return to our uh, original problem what we wanted is x prime x inverse now we have our determinant here so we have 1 over uh, and let's just call that d so that that result for the time being I will just call that d for determinant times and now I have to basically replicate this little formula here so we need to uh, swap the values on the diagonal so we have the sum of xi squared and I have n here and the values on the off diagonal stay the same but they get a minus sum of xi minus sum of xi okay so this is just implementing this formula here so and let's uh, write this as just one matrix so we are writing the sum of xi squared divided by d negative the sum of xi divided by d the determinants of course are scalar that means we can do this i divided by d and n divided by d so that's uh, x prime x inverse now the second term we need in our formula up here is this guy here x prime y so let's calculate that next so we have x prime y so we'll start with x prime we had that before 1 1 1 all the way and x1 x2 all the way to xn that's x prime and then we have y and that's going to be y1 y2 all the way to yn so we will get a 2 by 1 vector here the first one's going to be 1 times y1 1 plus 1 times y2 and so forth that is just going to be the sum of all y's and the second term is going to be x1 times y1 x2 times y2 and so forth so we get the sum of xi times yi here okay so that is x prime x prime y what we need of course is remember we want the beta hat 
which is, let me just replicate this formula, you can't replicate it often enough. So what we need is now the product of these two guys. Let's just copy the green bit here. Sum of xi squared over d negative sum of xi over d same here xi over d n over d and then times just this term here sum over yi and sum over xi times yi okay so and we know that this will give us two elements we are only interested in this second element okay because that is going to be beta 1 hat or we want to show that the formula for beta 1 hat is the same so let's see what is the formula for beta 1 hat coming from this so that's going to be that second element that is going to be that guy times this guy so we have negative xi divided by d but we multiply that with the sum of yi okay and then so that is that times that and then plus this guy times this guy so what we have here is plus n times the sum of xi yi divided by d so this we can oops we can we see we have the d everywhere here so we can factor out the d that's perhaps uh, that's perhaps the easiest and at the same time we can turn these two terms around so we'll have firstly something and that's divided by d okay so that's these two these two guys and then we have we'll take this bit n times the sum of x i y i then minus this bit sum of x i sum of y i okay so, and at this stage, it's possibly good, actually I'll do this here, can actually reintroduce the value for D. Let's just go, go back up. Remember, value for D is nothing else but N squared times the variance of X. So I will write this in here, N squared times the variance of x. So let's work a little bit target oriented. Remember all we've done here up to this stage is we'll derive the formula for beta 1 hat starting basically from our well-known OLS formula uh, for the matrix form and so that was starting from equation 15 and we said well we want to get to is uh, this stage here that we say that is the same that is the same as this result covariance y i x i divided by variance of x i so let's write this result let's trust what your teacher says and say that is going to be the same so we're just going to write equals covariance y i x i divided by the variance of x i here so all we need is a few intermediate steps to get to this stage now we can see for the uh, denominator we are almost there it's just that we have n squared times variance of x where what we need is uh, just the variance of x i oh, forgot the little i here so what do we do in the next step will introduce so we have 
n squared variance of xi. Now to get rid of this n squared we need an n squared up here as well. But we can't just add it, we'll have to make sure that the denominator remains the same. That means for each of these two summons, so in these parentheses we'll have the same two uh, summons here, but we'll also have to introduce a 1 over n squared so that it will cancel out with this because we can't really change uh, the denominator. So we'll have 1 over n squared times n the sum of xi yi minus 1 over n squared the sum of xi and the sum of yi. Okay. Now at this stage I'll just make my life a little bit easier. We have here n uh, times 1 over n squared. Well we know that this n and the n squared will cancel each other out so I'll just rub out that n and the squared. So we'll have here 1 over n. And over here we have 1 over n squared times that times that all I'm going to do is I'm going to split that 1 over n squared and write in two terms. I write 1 over n and times sum of xi and then 1 times 1 over n sum of yi. So now we, th we see a few things happening. Firstly, this guy here will cancel out. That's what we have for the next line. And here on the top we have 1 over n, the sum of xi yi minus 1 over n, the sum of xi times 1 over n, the sum of yi, divided by the variance of xi. So we are almost there. The only thing we now need we can simplify is these two terms. Okay, 1 over n times xi and 1 over n times y, sum of yi. This is of course nothing else but x bar and y bar. So we have here 1 over n xi yi minus that and down here we have the variance of xi and now again something you may remember from uh, statistics, first year statistics, this guy is nothing else but the covariance of yi xi. So all we've done, just to repeat, let's go back to the start, a lot of algebra and uh, a little bit of uh, matrix algebra revision uh, thrown in for nothing. We started out with equation uh, 15. Okay, we just worked for our algebra here. It wasn't all that easy because included an inverse. We said let's concentrate on that second element, the beta 1 hat. And let's establish that if we go through all this algebra, that what we find is indeed covariance yi xi divided by variance of xi, which is the formula for our OLS estimator for beta 1 from the observation wise form. And we've done that. Okay, bit of algebra, and we've gone uh, all over here. So that is a, a success already. So to conclude this little clip, we will also show that the we know when we are uh, estimating parameters, we are not only interested in the parameter value itself, but we are also interested in the uh, variance. So we will also now establish the equality of the variance of beta 1 hat. Okay, you know, usually we are interested in the standard deviation of this because that will give us the standard error of beta 1 hat and that we use for t stats. But the square root is just a uh, transformation of the variance. We can, if the variances are the same, the square roots will be the same. Okay, actually, uh, that's easier. So, and again, 
we need to show equality of the observationized form and the matrix form. So let's uh, write down first what we know about the matrix form. Again, this is a formula. Uh, you just need to know the variance of beta one of beta hat is sigma squared x prime x inverse. Okay, you just know that formula. Now for the observation wise form, observation wise form, one formula, uh, one way to calculate the variance for uh, the for any element in beta hat, so let's call that j for the chafed element. We will soon want it for the first element. But let me first write down the formula in general is sigma squared divided by SSTJ, the sum of squared total for the chafed variable, and 1 minus R squared J. So that is not the R squared of a regression, but what is that? That's the R squared if we regress the chafed variable on all other variables. Okay, so let's specialize this for beta hat 1. That's not a nice beta, beta hat 1. Uh, so what we basically now want to show is that here we have a 2 by 2 matrix, okay? And of that 2 by 2 matrix, now let's indicate that here. So what we have in the top element is the variance of beta naught hat. Here we have the variance of beta 1 hat. And here we have the core variances of the two, of beta naught hat, beta 1 hat. So what we are interested in is this element here. Okay, so basically what we want to show is that that element of this matrix calculation is the same as this. So firstly, however, we continue on the observation-wise form and we simplify knowing that we are working for beta 1. Remember, our x, let me just write this down here again, the x was a constant and x1, x2 and so forth. So if we regress our first, so now let's think about that rj squared. So what we want to know is you know, sigma squared sst1, okay, for our for this variable here. Let's call that zero because our beta is that zero uh, was labeled zero is one minus, and now we need to know what this r1 squared is. Now that is when we regress this variable, the x, on all other variables. Now that is only a constant. So if we run this regression, what's going to be the r squared of that regression? It's going to be zero because the constant cannot explain any of the variation in uh, our variable x. So that is going to be 1 minus zero. And if it's 1 minus zero, it's one, and then we can basically just take this last, whoops, take this last bit away. So it's just sigma squared divided by the sum squared total of our x variable. Okay, the, the counting here was this is variable zero, and this is variable one. Okay, so now we need to show that this guy here comes out as the same as this. X from x inverse now we're quite lucky we calculated that uh, already before where was it x prime x inverse here so let me just copy this uh, this guy across because I'm lazy I'll copy it so that is basically gonna be slightly too big basically going to be sigma squared times this green bit. Now as we said we're interested in this 2 2 bit so this 2 2 bit which is the variance of beta 1 hat it's just going to be 
sigma squared times this guy. Okay, sigma squared times n over d. Now, of course, we know what uh, d was. So we have uh, sigma squared times n. Oh, my little daughter has just woken up. It's coming in a little. So I'm back again. So we have uh, sigma squared times n divided by n squared times the variance of xi. Now, of course, that n and that square will cancel out. So we'll get sigma squared times n times the variance of xi. Mm, so is that the same? Well, let's write out what the variance is. Uh, n times, how do we usually calculate the variance? 1 over n times the sum of xi minus x bar squared. So we have n times 1 over n. Of course, this will cancel out. So we have sigma squared divided by the sum of xi minus x bar squared. And this is, of course, exactly what we call the sum of squared total. Okay, so that's the, just calculate the sum of squared total of our variable one here. We labeled, as we said up here, we labeled x as variable one. Okay, so now we've also established that the two different variance formula, which look extremely different as we started out, they actually turn out to be exactly uh, the same. Okay, that and that turned out to be exactly the same. So uh, that is all.